having the afternoon spree, um, what do you actually get up to? There's this traditional picture we have of football playing golf or fishing. Well, at the moment, as I say, there's, there's not a lot I can, I can do. As I say, I'm, I'm either doing presentations, signing or graphs, doing things like this. But uh, I like again golf and a, a, a swim now and again. It's nice and relaxing. What about the golf? How good is it or bad? Bad. It's <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I, just, I just line the balls up and just whack them and just let them go anywhere I want. Is that relaxing though as well? Does that is that one point where you can forget about the football? It is because you're out in there, you know, I mean, on a three mile course and nobody can bother you, just hit the balls and just have a bit of fresh air and just get out there and take no notice of anybody. And I suppose it's excess that it doesn't involve running around a football pitch. Well, it, well um, I'm usually running, I'm running after my balls. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the other golfers aren't. But, uh, it, is, it is relaxing. On the fitness front, being a, a striker, that has obviously got to be one of the positions where if you are slightly unfit, people are going to notice. Well, they do, they do, because you've got to run there, there, run back as far as all of those. Uh, I always try to keep yourself fit, it's, like it's, it's only the injuries and the knocks that knock you back a bit, but uh, otherwise I'm, I'm quite fit. Well, how do you go about the fitness? Do you do fitness outside of the club? or? Well, we've got exercise like upstairs, I usually, right. usually get on that now and again, but uh, don't do all that much, don't do all that much. What about fitness related to eating? Do you have to be careful what you eat or not? No, I'll just eat what I want, eat and drink what I want, and eat. I'll just get it off the next morning. Quite envious. What's your favourite dishes then? Are you? Favourite dishes? Are you? Double cheeseburgers and chips, I think, from McDonald's. <laughs> it's, it's stuff like that. I eat a lot of junk food and a lot of sweets. I don't, it's a wonder I don't put loads of weight on, but it just suddenly comes mm. off. They ever say at the club, oh, three burgers too many <laughs> this week? Or? <laughs> no, they, they don't know what I eat. They only know what we have for pre match and they have nice steak, egg, and beans, something like that, pre match, or cheese omelets. Is that still the traditional pre-match meal or steak, is that? That, that is the pre-match meal. Well, well, all I have now is cheese only beans and toast and a nice cup of tea. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm ready, for, ready to go then. What time do you usually get to the ground before a Saturday game? We usually get there about quarter to two, ten to two. Have a sit down and say, read the, read the programme, look, go and look at the pitch, and then uh, get back and get, get ready. What about a midweek game, depending on whether you're home or away? Midweek game, we say, oh, we train in the morning, have a little circle and a few spins. I'll come back and say, I have a, a bit of soup or something for dinner, and then I've, I've missed steak, egg and, egg and beans, and then I'm off there. Mm. What about away games midweek? Are they tiring? Because it's obviously, <laughs> depending on the distance, uh, you could be travelling for three or four hours before you get there. Yeah, they, they are tiring, so it takes a lot of yeah, That's why, if you're a good say manager and trainer, they get you there early enough so you can have a rest or sleep in the afternoon so you can relax and then get up and then ready refreshing for the game. Right. But then again come quarter to ten and you've got to sit back on the road. Well that's it, there again, oh here we go again, like you mean but as long as it's over you don't mind. It's just travelling there and getting the game over with and then on the way back you just you just relax and that's it, then it's gone. What about the next day? Do they give you some time off? They, they we usually have a, a day off a week so the manager's generous to us I think you know, we have a Wednesday off after a midweek game or even if we haven't got a midweek game. We run hard Tuesday, have a good breath, blow like clear the lungs, and then we're Wednesday off. What makes a good referee? Do, do referees come in and have a good lengthy chat with you before the game? Or? Not really. They check the studs, check your rings, check your necklaces, whatever, and all that. And uh, they just say, no swearing, 10 yards away from the ball, and I'll just let the play go on. But isn't that a kind of set menu that they're going to say to every team before every game? Would it be any easier if referees came in and had a chat? Or? Well, it would, but if, if they did that, I think they'd get accused of getting too, you know, getting too close to the players and allowing, you know, allowing them to carry on with it. Dirty fouls and stuff like that. But uh, I think the referee should just keep well away from the players and just do their job and read it But isn't that one of the problems that the referees are being accused of not understanding the players? Well, it is, but uh, they're referees, we're players. Uh, ours is a totally different game to going out there and playing, and theirs is totally different to going out there and doing uh, judgments on us. Referees and players, one side. Uh, obviously, it's a long way off, but uh, could you ever see yourself as Steve Ball, the manager? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think I'm uh, strong enough and hard enough for the manager's job. I don't think I'd like to go to so I'd, something like coaching or something or even they say something else out outside football. Mm. T V commentator. <laughs> not the way I talk. No, not the way I talk, no. <laughs> well, what about uh, management though? Is it uh, is it something that looks simpler than it is? Or it looks easy, yeah, but there's a there's a lot of uh, stress and hard work in beyond that, you know, I mean, beyond a happy face. Mm.
You often see a lot of unhappy faces in football management. Quite a few, quite a few. So we, we usually get the backlash a couple of times. What happens if the, the game's just gone really badly and you've lost 3-0? Um, do you just have to sit there and think, oh, well, it's going to come, so I've got to take it? And well, that's it. They say, you know whether you've had a bad game, you know. You know. I'd, I'd want the manager to pull me in and say, look, you, you've, you've had a bad game, you, you want to improve on this, improve on that. But uh, they've got to keep the distance as well, and they know how to, how to, how to plan the game out. Well, I think the pleasing thing about his um, rise to international football is that the line himself has never changed. His attitude to work, his attitude to his teammates and in the dressing room has never changed one little bit. And uh, uh, I think that's, that's very pleasing. He still gets the same sort of rollicking that, uh, that other players will get from time to time. Um, the other players take the mickey out of him just as much as he takes the mickey out of uh, his teammates. So it's been, it's been good for the dressing room that the star of the side has never been treated any differently and never wanted to be treated any differently. Um, and I think that helps in team spirit, in morale in the dressing room. Uh, and they obviously see his contribution to the team and, and they share in the success that he's had. I can recall is, uh, is run on the pitch at, against the Scots and I frankly felt a lump in my throat. I thought, felt I was part of it and uh, I was proud to be that way. And on comes Steve Ball for his first cap and he's only the fifth player to appear from the third division. I mean, his very first international, I think it was his first international against Scotland. I mean, three shots and the keepers had to, the keepers had to make two saves and he scored um, that's the way it always is. But a great strength about him is if he misses a chance, it, it doesn't get him down. And that takes him down. Ten minutes remaining. Ball. And again! Oh! Right in the corner. What a start. Scoring on his debut. The man from the third division and Wolves, or they're about to lead there. Scores on his first appearance at senior level. Eye for goal again. No hesitation, bang. The cross in here, and as he goes up with McPherson, look, it hits his back and he's already turning because he knows where it's going to drop and he finishes superbly and uh, really instinctive. So speaking on behalf of the fans, there is this pent-up feeling inside. Steve, we love you, we want you to stay, but uh, we hope sincerely that it doesn't now affect his England. And I think in the back of his mind, his England place, he's thought, well, if Wolves sort of totter now at the back end of this season, where is it going to put him? And uh, we sincerely hope and believe that uh, the fact that he's staying loyal to Wolves will not affect his chances with the England squad. He's already Wolves' second highest goal scorer behind John Richards, and he's made inroads into the England side. Can he score those sort of goals at international level, which is a, a different type of football? There again, I haven't got a crystal ball, I can't answer that. One can only say that if he's given the opportunity, he'll prove whether he can or whether he can't. And do you think he will get that opportunity? Because the problem is that the style of his play is not that sophisticated, is it? Um, when you come to sophistication and so on and so forth, the only thing that wins matches is the ball in the back of the net. Now, if someone decides that they're going to give him the opportunity to see whether he can do it, he'll take that opportunity and do it, or he'll take an opportunity and fail. And that's what he's done all the way along the line. Up to now, it's been one long string of success. I don't think he's had entirely a fair, uh, a fair crack of the whip in his uh, service to England. He hasn't, to me, he doesn't seem to have had the right sort of service um, okay uh, uh, Taylor picks the England team and it